Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. Now in today's video, we're going to be taking a look at Packard Bell Navigator. Now this was a program that I briefly mentioned in one of my $5 Packard Bell videos, but today we're gonna to be doing a full video specifically on this program. Now Packard Bell Navigator, if you don't know, was an alternative shell for Windows that was pre-installed on Packard Bell computers beginning in 1993. And it was intended to make it easier for the user to find information and launch programs on their PC. Because this functions as a replacement to either the Windows 3.1 Program Manager or in later versions, the Windows 95 Explorer, Start Menu, and Taskbar. So today we're going to be taking a look at two versions of this program. Version 1.0, which is what we've got on the screen right now, and version 3.5, which was released a few years later. So we're going to start with version 1.0. 1.0 here, which is what we've got on the screen right now. This was first released in 1993, and it shipped with Packard Bell computers that ran Windows 3.1. And it's a very simple UI, as you can see. Uh, we've got these six menu options on the main screen right here, and some buttons along the bottom. Now, later versions of Packard Bell Navigator included the virtual house with all those rooms inside, and that's probably what you think of when you think about this program. Now, the design of these earlier versions right here is actually very similar to an alternative shell for the Macintosh, that was called At Ease, and this was an Apple-designed alternative shell that was first compatible with System 7, and we may do a full video on that if you guys would like to see that, so be sure to let me know. But let's dive into Packard Bell Navigator 1.0 here. So, like I said, you've got these six menu options here, you've got the date and time up here at the very top, and when you mouse over these menu options, you get a brief description of what each of them do on the side here. So we're just gonna start with number one, which is getting started. So this launches a full screen application and you can see it kind of is off centered. It's up in the top left corner here because we are running uh, this virtual machine at a little bit of a higher resolution. So what this does is just tells you what the program is. It says thank you for choosing Packard Bell because again this is what you would see when you turned on your Packard Bell computer when you went out and bought it back in 1993. Uh, this interface is what you would see for the very first time before Windows. This is a Windows program. It's just a alternative shell for Windows. Uh, so Windows does have to be running in the background for this program to work, but the way that it was configured, you would see this before you even saw the Windows 3.1 program manager. So what it does is this just tells you, you know, thank you for purchasing the Packard Bell computer. It tells you what Navigator is, the simple way to learn and use your computer. Besides making computing easy, Navigator will introduce you to all the software that's already installed and ready to run. The way that I have this configured, and we'll just press this button right here to go back to the Navigator interface. Uh, the way that I have this virtual machine configured is it this is a copy, a standard copy of Windows 3.1 with Packard Bell Navigator installed. This doesn't have all of the other Packard Bell software that would typically come with a Packard Bell computer and that's just the way that I had to set it up for this video because using one of those master restore CDs in a virtual machine uh, you can kind of run into some problems with the CD driver functioning properly which is what I essentially had happen. Uh, so we're just going to go into tutorials here and you can see what I was talking about is kind of evident here because we've got a couple of these uh, items here are there's like no icon and normally there would be an icon there and when you click on Packard Bell tutorial for example it just comes up with this error message because it can't find the file that it's looking for and that's the case for everything on this screen even the cruise control program here aside from Windows tutorial so we can take a look at the Windows tutorial because this is the basic I mean this is the Windows 3.1 tutorial that comes with Windows 3.1 but even though we can't launch these other tutorials we can take a look at what they are I mean most of them are pretty self explanatory Packard Bell tutorial is going to show you how to use your Packard Bell computer productivity pack is it says over there the Microsoft Windows productivity pack is filled with information on getting the most out of Windows prodigy preview is well exactly what it is and Cruise Control, this is a self-running graphic presentation about Packard Bell, its products, and its services. So, kind of a little advertisement, I guess, telling you about some other Packard Bell products. Service and support, this is also pretty self-explanatory. This is how you can get support for your computer. So you can click on this tile right here, and this will launch us into another one of these full screen uh, applications with the exact same interface as that initial tutorial that we took a look at. So what this does is it tells you how you can get support for your computer. I believe it gives you the phone number. Well, first it tells you 
the awards that they've gotten, technical support. Here's a picture of their technical support center, nationwide service, on-site service. So this just tells you what kind of support that you can expect. And here's the phone number that you can call. And uh, here's your, your support hours, which it looks like they were, uh, yeah, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 24 seven support. So that's pretty cool. And it also tells you some of the pieces of information that you have to have uh, when you call the you know, things they will ask you for. So you also have upgrade info here, and this is another one of those presentation style UIs. And this doesn't tell you exactly how to upgrade your computer components, but it tells you just some of the things that you can do. So this tells you about upgrading the microprocessor, adding more RAM, and adding more cache memory. And it explains what each of these upgrades will do. So it explains what a microprocessor is. It talks about what adding more RAM can do. Registration info, this is where you can fill out your registration information. Pretty self-explanatory. And last but not least, we have system info, which unfortunately we don't have this uh, properly set up as well because there's a missing PIF file that it cannot find. Uh, but that is what service and support, that's what this third menu option is. Now software, this is where you can actually get into launching programs from Packard Bell Navigator. So you can see that most of these here are, uh, these would have come with your computer if you purchased the Packard Bell computer. Uh, it would have come with Microsoft Works, Microsoft Money, TurboTax 1992, a free trial of Prodigy, and WinFax. And we don't have any of these installed, so it's not going to be able to find it. Now, under games, we do have the majority of these games in here. And that's because I have a couple of versions of the Microsoft Entertainment Pack installed in this virtual machine. Uh, and some of those games do, or they did come pre-installed with Packard Bell computers. Uh, as we saw in my Windows 95 25th anniversary special, which is where we restored the Packard Bell uh, computer that I have back to factory settings. And it did come with some uh, games from the Microsoft Entertainment Pack, which is pretty cool. We are missing Tut's Tomb though, but this is, I mean, it's just, you know, you can launch these games. So like Tetravex here, I can click on this. Here's Tetravex. I can launch Pegged. Uh, yeah, it's, uh, we're not gonna go through all these games. I did a retrospective video on the Microsoft Entertainment Packs. If you wanna see that, that'll be up in the cards um, because I do go through all of the games in detail in that video. But but yeah, this is how you can launch uh, all the games that came pre-installed with your computer. So we'll go back to the software menu here. Now we essentially have the same thing with utilities, although there are less options in here. We've got system information, clock settings, sound settings. Most of these would be in the control panel. As you can see, when we click on clock settings, it actually opens up the entire control panel and then brings up the date and time preferences here. Uh, although when we close out of the date and time preferences, it also closes out of the control panel. Uh, or at least it moves it into the background. Let me press Alt-Tab. No, it's not running in the background, so it does close the entire control panel. Uh, we do have startup options. This is where you can choose if you want to start the computer with Packard Bell Navigator, or if you want to bypass it and go straight to Windows. We also have, uh, this is where you can launch the MS-DOS prompt, so you can click on this. Launches a full screen DOS prompt. We also have Format Disk, which just brings up the format tool. This is how you could format a floppy disk if you needed to and disk image. This we also don't have, as you can see, uh, but you would use this tool to uh, make master copies of your preloaded software. So this is essentially creating your own master restore disk to restore your uh, computer back to its factory state uh, whenever you need to. And last but not least, we have personal software. And this is pretty cool because this is how you can create essentially a custom launcher for the programs that you use the most. So you can see that there's nothing here, but I can click this plus and minus button down here. We'll select add, and then we can click on one of these tiles. And now I can choose whatever program I, I want. So we've got Calmira installed on here. So we'll just have Calmira.exe, we'll add that. You can change the button icon to whatever you want. So let's say I wanna change this to uh, let's see here, let's do uh, these crayons right here. So we'll select that and press the check mark. You can give it a name and we'll say check. And there we go. So this will launch Calmira, which I did a video on. It'll be up in the cards if you want to check this out. This is a uh, Windows 95 like interface for Windows 3.1, which is pretty cool. So that's how you can add. And you can see that since I'm out of the edit mode here, it'll just bring up an error message letting you know that it's an empty button. So to edit, to be in the edit mode, you have to 
click this plus and minus button down here. And this is how you can remove shortcuts as well. I just change the option down here to delete and then select Calmira and then it'll ask me to confirm. I'll say yes. And now that is gone. So this is probably the, I mean, this is just really cool because yeah, it just gives you your own little custom launcher. So you could just honestly have it on this screen. Like whenever you start up your computer, just have it, you know, just go, well, you can't set it to go to this screen, but you can just manually go into it when you start your computer and then just launch all your programs from here. So you could have, you know, say you use Microsoft Word or WordPerfect or Corel Draw. We just did a video on that if you want to check it out. You could have all those here and just launch it, you know, launch them all, all right from here, which is pretty awesome. So that is the personal software menu here. And that concludes all of the ways that you can launch programs from Packard Bell Navigator. Now, this fifth option right here will just exit Packard Bell Navigator and go to Windows. And this sixth option will exit back to Microsoft DOS. Now, what you've got down here, this help button, Button, you can click on this to just have some help information of whatever screen that you're on. Now this security option is pretty cool. What you can do is set a password. We'll put in MJD as the password, super secure. We'll click on OK. And now we just type it again and we press OK. So now we're in security mode and what I can do is click on, let's say that I want to lock my software, I want to lock exiting to MS-DOS, and I want to lock uh, go into Windows. And what this does is it prevents people from getting into these options uh, without typing in the password. So what I have to do is press the lock down here at the bottom to exit security mode. And now I can say that I try to go into getting started. It's going to say, oh, this is a locked button. You got to type in the password. So I can type in our super secure password. And now we actually load into the getting started guide here. Uh, so yeah, you can choose which of these options that you want locked and which ones that you want to, uh, to be able to be accessed by anybody. So like if you were using a shared computer or if you had your children using your computer occasionally and you didn't want them launching any of your programs or exiting to MS-DOS or you know doing whatever, uh, you can lock these to where they won't be able to access it without the password. And this is a feature that Windows 3.1 didn't have, by the way. You could not lock individual applications and prevent people from opening them up without typing in a password. Now you also have next to that lock button down here, you've got this registration button. And this just tells you how to register your computer. Now you have a copy for your record, which is this virtual copy that we took a look at before, but it tells you to find the postage paid card that came with your computer and just mail it to Packard Bell. That's how you would actually register it with Packard Bell. So that is Packard Bell Navigator version 1.0. What we're going to do now is switch over to my $5 Packard Bell computer, and we're going to take a look at version 3.5. All right, everybody, here we are on the $5 Packard Bell, and we've got Packard Bell Navigator opened up here. Now, this is either version 3.5 or 3.6. Uh, both of them look pretty similar, but yeah, this is uh, the interface here, and you can see that it looks uh, like the interior of a house. That's exactly what this is. So there are multiple rooms in here. Now, this specific version came out in late 1994. And when you see this, you might think of Microsoft Bob because Microsoft Bob had a, a very similar concept. I mean, it wasn't exactly the same. The house did look much different and the rooms obviously were much different. There was a virtual assistant in Bob. You don't have that here. But this actually predates Microsoft Bob. Microsoft Bob came out in early 19. 1995 and this again came out in late 1994 so yeah this actually predates Microsoft Bob now you do have some quick shortcuts here on the top of the screen and you can do things like exit to Windows normally the Windows start menu and everything that you see in the background uh, would not be running. I just have it configured this way so that we can easily get access to Windows while uh, Navigator is running here. This is your preferences uh, panel up here. If you click on this, it will open up the preferences. This is where you can choose uh, how you want the computer to start up, if you want it to start up with Navigator or go straight to Windows. There's also uh, a multi-user mode, and this allows you to create essentially different user accounts for Navigator, and you know you could sign into those accounts if you had multiple different people using your computer, which was pretty nice. And just like in Navigator 1.0, you have the ability to lock certain aspects of 
this version of Navigator with uh, clicking on that little key there. And that'll bring up the security preferences panel again. And you can type in whatever password you want to use here. We'll just type in MJD. And we can go to toolbar access. Like say we didn't want to be able to access go to Windows without typing in the password. We can turn that off. Do the same with software access. You can get a list of uh, all the software programs that you want uh, people to need to put in the password to be able to access. So this is really useful if you were using this on a shared computer where you're sharing it with other people and or like I mentioned earlier, your kids. If you didn't want your kids to mess up something or launch a program that you don't want them launching, uh, this is a very, very useful feature. One of the other cool things that this version of Navigator has is the ability to, if you have a modem installed, make and receive phone calls from your computer. Now you can do this by clicking on this icon right here. Now we don't have a modem installed, so it's not gonna be able to find one, but if it had a modem installed, it would detect that and it would allow us to go through the setup process. So this is a piece of software developed by SoftNet and it's just known as fax and voice software for Windows. But what you can do is see this little red phone over here, you can click on that to uh, enable the answering machine essentially to where when you receive a phone call, it can go to the computer's answering machine here through Packard Bell Navigator. Now again, you have to have a modem for all of this to work. So yeah, that is really, really awesome. So you could obviously turn this off like if you were at your computer and you wanted to just take phone calls from your computer or through your actual phone, you could have it turned off. But say you wanna step out for the day or you're going to work or whatever, you can turn this on and then the computer's answering machine will answer all your phone calls for you. Uh, this up here is how you uh, view all your open applications. It's called the running man, as you can see down here. And we can click on this to get a list of running programs and you can shut them down or bring them to front. So if I had like Windows Explorer opened in the background and then let's click on Navigator, uh, I can go here and then it will show my computer. I can bring it to the front of the, uh, to the front of the Navigator program or I can choose to shut it down. Uh, by doing that and then it will close the program so pretty cool now you've got throughout the house here just like in microsoft bob you have these objects here that represent certain programs so you can access the phone and stuff from this icon up here but you can also click the phone down here to get access to the same thing. That is the case for all of these different icons here. So you've got a TV here, you can click on this. If you had a TV tuner installed and set up, you could utilize this. We don't have that set up properly. There's also this Packard Bell computer box over here, which if you click on this, it'll give you information on how to register your computer. Now what's also really nice is there's this little I button down here at the bottom left. And I can click on this and then drag the I wherever I want uh, over one of these objects. And it will tell me exactly what it does. So let's say I want to mouse over the Windows icon up here. I can click on this and it will tell me what this does. Clicking on the Windows icon shuts down Navigator and takes you directly to the Windows computing environment. You've also got these four links on the right side to go to tutorials, view the Navigator intro, view the internet intro, or click on done just to exit out of this little window here. And Packer Bell Navigator comes with a lot of tutorials and just tools to really show you how to use your computer and the World Wide Web. We can click on view internet intro here, and this is a beginner's guide to the internet. And this just tells you, it says, if you're like most people, you've heard a lot about the internet. Now you can try it out for 30 days free with no obligation, making reference to the uh, many, I mean, there's a, I believe there's an AOL trial in here, but there's also a CompuServe and Prodigy trial as well. So uh, yeah, it just kind of tells you about that. You can click on next slide. It tells you what the internet is. You can click on next slide, it tells you about email, how you can reach out to the world, stay connected and try it out. So that would be really useful for somebody who had never used the internet before or had never used a computer before. I mean, like I said, there is a lot of documentation, very beginner friendly tutorials and guides on just how to use your computer, which is really awesome. Now, unlike in Microsoft Bob, there are no doors in Navigator. Uh, to get to different areas of the house, you just have to click on these open spaces here. So there's only two of them. You've got this room over here, which is called the software room. And then you've got this room to the left, which is called the info room. So we're going to go to the info room first. So I'm going to click on that. And this is the info room. And what you can do here is you can get information 
about various programs on your system. So across the top here, we've got internet, news groups, and internet mail. Uh, this is all, if I were to click on this, it would bring up the internet setup wizard because we don't have any of this set up because we don't have a modem installed. Uh, but this is how you could get access to Packard Bell's web browser because yes, they do have one of those I can show you in the start menu here. If we go to Packard Bell, uh, there is a, where is it at? It's not in here. It's multimedia applications. Oh, it's under communication. So here is the Packard Bell web browser. Packard Bell News Browser, that's for the news groups, and Packard Bell Internet Mail. So these are all programs that come uh, with every Packard Bell computer. And yeah, this is how you could get access to them from within Navigator. What you also have, if this wants to close here, you've got shortcuts to Prodigy, AOL, and CompuServe. And then you have guides down below that for Prodigy, AOL, and CompuServe. So if I want to view the America Online demo, I can click on this. And this is again stored on the CD-ROM, but it would be a demonstration on well how to use America online how it works and you got the same thing for prodigy and CompuServe you can see that the uh you got like a little, well, there's a film reel here for Prodigy, and then you've got like a VHS tape for AOL and CompuServe, which is pretty cool. So yeah, there's a lot of attention to detail in this program, which I think is really awesome. Now, one of the things that I touched on in the Windows 95 25th anniversary video, uh, in each one of these rooms, at least there's definitely one out here. It's this little laptop right here. Uh, let's see if there's one in the software room. Yes, there is. And there is one in the info room. There's a, one of these Packard Bell laptops right here. This opens up the Packard Bell, I believe it's called the Task Jumper. And what this does is it gives you quick access to common things that you would use on your computer. And they're all split up into these categories here. So if I wanted to, for example, launch a game, really quickly I can just click on Games, I can choose the game from here, and then double click on it to start it. So here's Microsoft Hearts starting up. So if you wanted to launch a specific application, and you didn't want to search throughout the entire house for it, you could use one of these laptops in any one of the rooms, click on it, and get quick access to whatever application that you were looking for. Uh, this is kind of like Packard Bell Navigator's version of the Windows Start menu because it kind of provides similar functionality. What you've also got is this shelf here, which is called the manual shelf. Now, there aren't any manuals in here, aside from under accessories, you have uh, manuals for the sound card, hardware, and software. So this is where you would get access to manuals if there were any in here. Now, this is where, I mean, I think this is one of the flaws with Navigator, specifically in this manuals menu here, or on this manual shelf. To get back to the room we were just in, there's this, I mean, you see this like tiny gap here at the right of the screen? Like, I think they should have made this a little bit larger. Now there is this arrow here pointing to like, this is what you have to click on to go back to the info room, but it's such a small, um, area like to click your mouse on so I, that's just one of the things that I noticed specifically on the manual shelf you've also got this is the tutorial uh, shelf here where you can get access to those tutorials that I was talking about uh, and then finally we have the software room this is what I really want to focus on because this is where you can launch all of your software. Now you see we've already got a, a few pieces of software added in here for us and there's actually categories here. So right now we're in the productivity category. There's also health and home, reference and learning, entertainment, children's corner, communication tools, and software accessories. So under productivity, this is where you've got things like Microsoft Works, Microsoft Money, Action, which is a tool for building multimedia presentations, Arc Workspace and Quicken. All of this stuff uh, comes standard with Packard Bell computers at this time. So let's say that I want to launch Microsoft Money. I can click on that here and it's going to launch Microsoft Money for us. So here it is, Microsoft Money for Windows 95. We're not gonna go through this entire program. What you've also got is if we go down to software accessories, these are gonna be more uh, common Windows applications. So you've got like a shortcut to the MS-DOS prompt. You've also got Microsoft Paint, Notepad, and Calculator. And uh, yeah, so what you can do, just like in Navigator 1.0, uh, you can add your own application. So let's say for productivity, I wanna add something. So I click on this plus button down here at the bottom. So you've got two options. You can install new software from a disk, or you can add already installed software to Navigator, which is what we're going to choose. So we click OK. 
it's going to come up with a uh, little browser here. It gives you a list of applications. And then you've got two uh, sources here. You can choose all applications in the taskbar start menu, which I assume it just means start menu, or you can choose all applications on your entire hard disk. And this will just show you the executable file name. It doesn't have that nice icon or anything like that. You can also change what drive that you're searching on. So if I wanted, like if I had another hard drive, uh, I could change to that here. But let's say I want to add WordPad, which is write.exe. I'll have that selected and click on add and then click on done. And now here's write.exe right here. Now you can see it doesn't have that nice artwork or anything. Um, but you know, this is a standard like a Windows program, which is probably gonna look pretty similar to the software accessories, although these do have uh, custom designed um, icons as well. But that's how that you add applications to it. I can launch right just like any other application, just click on it, and it will uh, load WordPad here. Although yeah, it's it still keeps the executable file name here. So it keeps write.exe. And you can see that there's nothing I mean, when you mouse over it, down here at the bottom, it just says write.exe instead of having a nice description of the item. And then if I want to remove an item from here, there's not a remove button down here at the bottom like there was well in Navigator 1.0, there was that plus and minus button that you would press to get access to add and remove and, and change options. But in this version of Navigator, there's this trash can down here at the bottom left. And what you have to do is use the right mouse button. Uh, so you have to have whatever application that you want to remove. Uh, click and hold the right mouse button and then drag it to the trash can. You can see there's that little icon there and then let go and it will just confirm for us here. Are you sure you want to delete the application? Just drag to the trash can, click on yes. And now the application is gone and you can obviously do that with any of these applications if you want to. So I just got rid of quick in there. You've also got that same laptop right here for accessing the task jumper. And then you can access the internet by clicking on this right here. And this will again open up that same little menu you can choose to view the internet intro or go directly to the internet. And the internet intro is again this brief tutorial here. And so that is the software room. We already took a look at the info room. Uh, the, there are clocks uh, scattered throughout the house here. And this does view, like I mentioned in the other video, this does view uh, the exact time on the system. So right now the system is reporting a time of 5.30 p.m. That's what it shows on the clock. If I were to change this to say, uh, 9 o'clock p.m. or 9.30 p.m. I can hit apply and watch the clock will change for us there. Uh, so that is nice. And I believe there's a clock in, well, not in every room. There's not one here in the software room, but there is one here in the living room. So unlike in Microsoft Bob, there's not uh, any way to move these objects around. That was something that you could do with Microsoft Bob. Uh, you unfortunately can't do that in Navigator. But Navigator is still a pretty cool program. It was nice that it was included with all the Packard Bell computers. Unfortunately, though, this was another case where Microsoft used their a uh, very large influence in the computing world to essentially stop OEMs from bundling applications like this that would launch before Windows or on top of Windows and replace uh, Windows as a graphical user interface. Even though, again, this did rely on Windows to be installed, like you have to have Windows installed to use this, but it was intended to be a UI replacement for Windows. Microsoft didn't like that too much, and it's alleged that they threatened to increase the price of Windows licenses uh, to these OEMs who are using programs like this, or just threaten to withhold Windows licenses from them, which would essentially mean that they would not have an operating system to put on their computers. And that essentially got rid of programs like Packard Bell Navigator. And it's yet another example of how Microsoft used their massive influence in the computer software world to uh, get what they want, even if it was through very shady means. Um, but that's gonna wrap it up for today's video, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed this one. If you did, definitely be sure to give it a thumbs up. Be sure to get some subscribe down below and turn on those channel notifications if you haven't already to get notified whenever I upload a new video, which I do every single week, multiple times per week on this channel. And as always, guys, I want to thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.